Hello everyone. Today we're going to take a look at implementing a struct. Uh, the first thing we'd like to do is go over what the struct is really good for and what we can do with the struct is group our data together really nicely. So I've added a few controls here for our book app. Earlier we just had genre with the drop down. Now we have a couple of text boxes that are going to be used to take in user input and then we will create a book list from that. And so our struct will be very nice for grouping together these three pieces of information at the top. So a user will be able to put in this data and then we can store it nicely in a little bundle and create a book list from it. So the struct allows us to, to group the data. It makes it very understandable reading it from a code perspective. And it's less burdensome than using some of the bigger classes that we've seen, like with the list that can do sorting and a whole other vari large variety of, of great functionality that comes with the list. That class has a lot of overhead that a struct doesn't. If we're just trying to group together very simple pieces of information, this is where the struct will be very powerful. So let's start out by first defining our struct. We're using public here similar to what we did earlier that I didn't really mention much but we're using public here to give access to other parts of our program say we create more forms or other classes something like a the struct or the enum you're probably gonna want to be able to populate that data you're probably gonna be able to want to make a book struct and another part in another part of your code and so this is a situation where it actually does make sense to use the public data type where we give more broad scope to this general object that we're building here so now let's build the three data types that are going to store title author and genre so here we will use Here's our title. And in here, we're going to use these get and setter methods. This is very similar to me building, very similar to we built earlier with get value from the combo box. So with the get and setter, we're able to update this title variable very easily. Uh, we could also build methods. We could build s similar to what we might have with one of these where we then take in a parameter and update the title variable and then or read the title variable and return it. That's essentially what we're doing with get and set here. It allows us to get the value so we can do whatever the name of our book is dot title to get the value or set the value using the same logic. Let's do the same for author with get and set. I'm going to copy this and then public. Remember our genre here is our data type. Our enum genre is our data type. So we're going to use use that for where our data type is and this is our grouping this is our public struct this is our struct which we've named as data type book so going forward now we use book to modify future groupings of books so I would like to test this struct that we've built. 
So I'm going to build a little method that will test our struct. And in here, our test button will run this code. So we're going to reuse that test button to run our code. And inside my test function, we're going to first build our first book, new book, structs, need to be initialized up front here. So we are going to initialize our struct like so. And we initialize it without parentheses here, but very similarly to how we would initialize our a list or an array. One important detail though is what you saw there. We get an error. They want us to initialize this up front. We can leave it blank if you want and to initialize it later. But we do need to put in the, the, the curly braces to initialize it. So here we're just going to put in some filler code. These need to be commas. And this should just say author. And then, so we're taking these properties, as they're called, and updating them. I believe we could also update them this way. New author. Yeah, so if we left the author out here, we would use the dot property to then access this author that's inside of our book structure by calling out test book which is our what we've named that specific book and then we can just display the data I'm going to copy the string interpolation here just to make it a little bit easier uh, and we're gonna call that test book rather than example and let's display it by pressing our test button here yeah, so we get new author, example, book, fiction. So we've seen how we can test our struct and display the data. That's great. Now let's put it to good use. Let's build this add button to populate this list box, excuse me, this combo box down here with user inputs. That's the goal here. We'd like to pull this data in and then populate the combo box. So we do that with text box. This one is title. And then this one will be author. Use text to read from our text box. Then we have a little bit of error checking here. So this uses the 
string is null or empty. So if it's a, an empty string, meaning the user didn't put any information in there, then we will know and can shoot them an error, which is what we're going to see here. Simple little error message. And then we do return to prevent the remaining code from running. It just ends right here. So if the user doesn't put in a title or with the double vertical bars, doesn't put in an author, then we say please enter title and author and finish the method. Don't continue. Let's assume that they entered a title and author, so this code inside the if statement doesn't run. Let's add a new book. So this is our initialization of a new struct here. Curly brace and semicolon. These are different variables. Title here which I've misspelled. Title here refers to the title that's inside of our title that's inside our book struct here. And I've named my struct, this needs to be a comma, I've named my struct new book. So that's that's how we access this specific grouping of data. Test book was another grouping of data. Now we're looking at this grouping of data, new book, with a type of book. That's our variable type now. Author, which is right here in our book struct, will be populated with author, which we've pulled from the text box here. If we wanted to be a little less verbose, this could go right here to populate what our author field is of our book, but we are going to keep our code in this organized fashion because we're using it down to check if it's empty. And the last detail is this book genre. And because we wrote this function earlier, get genre from combo box, it's a little bit easier to populate the book genre. This needs to not be a semicolon. Habit is getting the best of me with the semicolons. Now we want to update this book list with items.add just like we did quite frequently with list boxes. And now that we've added it, let's just put a little message box saying that it's worked. So here now we can add books to our book list here. So title, test, book. I'm going to make myself the author science fiction let's add the book book added we should see it on our list here nice so this was a slow progression but we have added some new controls to our book app and now we have the ability to increase our book list and next we'll explore how to uh, build a little more functionality out of this drop drop down here so uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.